All right, good morning, everybody. So I wanted to do a six month review of the Ember now that I've had time. Gina and I have done a bunch of trips. I don't know, we've probably done close to 20 trips with it since January. And we've been able to use all the little stuff. We've learned a lot about what to do and what not to do. And so we wanted to share with you all the good, the bad, and the ugly about the little camper. So we love the little camper. It's been great to travel with. It's easy to tow. It's 21.6, I believe, 22.6. So it fits in the state parks, easy. It fits in the national forest, easy. It's easy to back up. It's easy to pull forward. It tows great. So I've got a list of all the different um, stuff on the outside that I wanted to go over with you. Okay, so the Kurt adjustable coupler is great because it's got different um, heights here where you can set up the hitch to match up to your vehicle. So Campers Inn originally set it up for me. And um, so the trailer sits very level when it's hooked up. The second thing is, is this seven way pin. It's got a little holder right here on the inside of the frame which keeps you from having to put your seven way pin in the dirt or anywhere else. So that's a nice little clean fit for it there. Then one of the other great features of this camper is the Lippert flat jack. Most tongue jacks stick up right here and they go straight up and down. This is a new design, I guess. It's the flat jack and it's controlled right over here on this side is the button. So you can stand out of the way keep a good eye on the, the height and adjust it up and down. It works great. The flat jack plus I'm able to open my tailgate on my truck since there's nothing here in the way. And since there's no jack there, they were able to put this nice powder coated aluminum storage box here. Um, on this, we'll start on this other side. This is where the propane is stored. So I've got one tank now. I've got to refill the other one. We finally have used up the original two tanks that came with the camper. But it's got a nice little valve in the middle. You can adjust it to one side or the other. And we have put a little gauge on the tanks so that we know when we're running low. So it took six months for us to use up two tanks and that was in some winter camping using the heater and also a lot of cooking. We do a lot of propane cooking. So then on this side, they say this is like a battery storage. Our batteries with the solar package we've got, the batteries are inside. So this is like my junk drawer right here. I keep all my cables, my levelers, some rags, a little thing for the Anderson or the, um, equalizer hitch on here just odds and ends so it's a great storage and they say this is structural you can stand on it i don't want to stand on it because i don't want to scratch up the powder coated paint on here but you could and i have gotten up there but i realized quickly that you will scratch the powder coating and i don't want to do that so great little storage spot right there so as we come around the trailer you've got another um, compartment here. This has the Nautilus P 2.5, a B and B center. This is your all in one center right here. So you got your fresh water coming in. I keep a hose running through here, right down through the bottom. It's a nice clean fit. All I have to do is hook up my hose right to the bottom there. It works great. You've got your black tank flush here. Sanitize and winterize. We're in Florida, so I don't really see us going to have to winterize. But another great feature, if you see my video on the dump station, is you can dump from standing up here. You don't have to be bent over in the back where the um, stinky slinky comes out. You stand right here and you pull your valves, and then you're able to um, hook up your black tank flush right here. You don't have to be over there to do that. You've also got a hot and cold shower outlet here and it comes with a little hose for the quick connect hooks right on 
and you're ready to go take a shower it comes with this little nozzle right here it's got a bunch of different um, spray patterns on there so that's great for hosing stuff off washing off your feet or whatever and I keep my hoses my water filter the little pressure gauge to keep from over pressurizing the tank it also has a nice light up in here it's a motion activated light so when you close it the light will go off there's also a switch on there where you can keep it off all the time or you can turn it on when you want to but the switch is very hard to reach it's between the wall and the light there's not much room in there to do that so I've left it on the motion activated one then if you come over here Gina right here is a hookup for a portable solar panel it's a go power portable solar panel hookup right there you could run the cable right through the bottom here and hook up your little solar panel it's a great little center they've got this little divider in here to keep the cold air out I guess and then while we're up in this compartment where I keep all my stuff is the tire minder so the ember comes with this now when you first get the ember it's not going to be hooked up the little caps are not going to be on the tires but they do supply it with all of their campers and then you've got your battery disconnect right here so I want to do a video and show you guys how to set up this tire minder it's fairly simple but on the day that you're picking up your camper you've got a lot of stuff on your mind and the dealer's not necessarily gonna know about it which was our case they didn't know about the caps so we'll do a separate video on that so if we walk around to this campsite here we've got a, another storage compartment here which I keep a few little odds and ends tools we've got the battery monitor and then we've got the um, inverter remote right here so you can see we're burning up some power right now it also has a motion sensor light but I leave this one off um, mostly because I don't want bugs and stuff getting in here when I open this side and I don't really need the light on this side the other side you need it a little more so it's a great little pass-through storage there's not a whole lot of room but we keep a broom a few tools our floor mat to put out under the camp uh, it's a great great little storage plus it works as a table so while I'm here this light is set up for a Furion side marker camera so it's pre-wired for the side marker camera one on each side and then the back I'll show you when we get around there has the rear backup camera okay so as we're coming around the trailer we've got these great Lippert steps the stable steps I call them I'm, I'm not sure if that's the solid step XF these steps are great they've got um little pins that you can adjust to give you whatever height you need I take my little level and I put the level across this way and then I level them this way to make sure it's flat because if you set them up too high your door won't close properly and it'll cause you some some issues so the steps are great Ember has a nice little handrail on here to um, give you a little grab bar which has worked out good with Gina and her broken foot gives her something to hang on to while she's climbing up the steps I'm gonna turn on the lights the uh, LED lights here for the awning so what's really cool about these lights if you want to come under here I don't know if you can see this or not but it comes with the LED lights and there's a dimmer on here I don't know how good that's showing up on the camera usually they flash a lot but maybe if you come underneath the canopy a little bit so they're dimmable they get really bright when you're in a dark campsite these lights are really bright but they dim which is great because sometimes you don't want a bright light you just want a little light dim light while we're talking lights here we've got a step light that um, is a great little light it lights up your step um, kind of hard to see in the daytime but it is right here it's a nice little amber colored light it casts a little light on the steps so when you're coming in at night it's plenty of light to see the steps so that's a great little 
great little feature that somebody was thinking about. So as we move around the camper, you've got a little spray port here for that um, quick connect hose to fit right on here. I had a few issues when I first brought the camper home. I was able to get underneath the sink, take off the, um, the little paneling they've got hiding the pipes. I unscrewed these little screws here, took this off, and was able to fix it myself. It, the little valve was not opening and closing correctly, so I took a little piece of like a ballpoint pen, poked it in and out, and the spray port began to work. So they're pretty simple little things to work on. Nice little spray port. It's only cold water. Doesn't have hot water. The hot water's on the other side. Then you've got a nice little 110 outlet out here. Honestly, we haven't used this one a lot, um, but we've we've talked about uh, setting up a little table here and using this for something. But it's great to have in case you need it. So as we move down right here, you can see the valve stem on the um, tires. This is the um, tire link. So you hook these up. We'll do a video showing you how to get these going, how to pair it with your phone, get the other piece going. I wouldn't recommend leaving the dealership without these hooked up because you never know what your tire pressure is when you leave there unless you check it. So it's a great thing. Do it before you leave the dealership. So as we're coming around, this little unit has an emergency brake on it. What we call an emergency brake. It's like a chalk. So this little piece locks into your tire right here. There's a handle in the front storage box that'll lock it. So that way when you get to camp, you get set up, you lock your tires. You don't have to worry about rolling. You don't have to worry about little plastic chocks under your tires. I use it also, it doubles for my little dog. I hold my, hold the little leash in there. Josh the RV nerd calls it the drunk uncle hook, but that's my little doggy hookup. Now while we're over here, you can't bypass this Kurt independent suspicion, suspension. It's got a coil springs and shocks. I mean, this thing rides so good going down the road, and our stuff really doesn't get shook up inside. Um, but that is a great system right there. This is your overflow for your fresh water tank inside, so when your tank is full, it will start coming out here. Now, what I do before I take off on a trip going down the road is I'll put a little cork in the end of this because Gina's followed me, and she's noticed that water comes running out, so as you're turning and going around uh, the water will spill out and I don't want to spill lose water before I get to camp so put a little cork in there you just need to remember to take the cork out before you start using your pump so it doesn't suck the walls of the tank in so while we're on this side we have a lot of windows these windows are great they're double acrylic windows um, they fully open up and they all have hinges. I'm going to open one just to show you guys So some of them come with um, Little Clickers that as you open it it clicks into place. This one has a little knob so you can hold it open um, So it's great to get some ventilation through here. It has the bug screen that comes up and it also has the solar screen to keep the sun out and it does help with the temperature inside when the sun's shining to keep that open so i'll leave that window open for now I'll turn these led lights off and the step lights off all right and while we're here it's got a great little screen door i mean it's just great it's got a little sliding thing here so you can reach in reach out it just it works great opens and closes like it's supposed to so all the windows open at least this far um, these are a little harder to get to they're by the bunk and the storage but when we need to we can open them up so moving around so this is our outdoor kitchen when you first get your camper you're most likely going to have a 110 volt small little refrigerator here 
we didn't really need it once we got the fridge inside fixed so we took that out and we've opted for some storage which we've got videos up on that so I keep my coffee maker the coffee pot we've got a little propane stove in case we don't want to cook inside we've got a little propane stove we can use outdoors I also carry my coffee grinder in here so that's the bottom shelf and then on this top shelf right now we've got some cast iron we've got the um, extra propane hoses we got a 12 foot quick connect to be able to hook up right down here is the propane cooker hooker as Josh the RV nerd calls it so this is where you quick connect for your propane goes it's got a little on off valve right here come your camper will come with a short hose that just barely fits inside to run this griddle and what we have done is bought a longer one and I got a little side table because somewhere on here it tells you not to cook with the awning out and what I noticed is the smells from the burgers and everything else end up inside this compartment plus if you drop little peas or rice or anything back there it's hard to clean out so I get a little small table set it over here got my 12 foot hose I can be away from the camper I don't have to worry about damaging the awning and I don't have to worry about the smells so Amazon 12 foot quick connect propane hose it's a great little addition in here I've also got the little faucet and stuff for our it's a little outdoor sink for like I guess they sell it for cleaning fish or whatever but put a bucket underneath the bottom pipe and you can wash up your hands or whatever you wanted to do so then back you've got a nice built-in top shelf here we keep the volcano grill on top some little gloves for safety our burger flippers and tongs and then I've got my waffle maker back here it also has a 110 outlet two 110 outlets here on this side it's got a nice little amber glow light which is great in the evening time if you just need a little small light um, it's a great little place now also on this side behind my cutting board in the back maybe if you come over here Jeannie you can see it. there's also a receptacle down in the back over there that the refrigerator was plugged into which we're not using that anymore so there is more power so total you have three plug-ins out here that you could use plus the two that are right there so you got plenty of outdoor power if you if you need that many and this makes a great table I mean it's a great little working surface I put a cutting board on here I can prep food set my coffee on there it's just a great great little table folds up and locks nicely so as we're moving around it's got a nice canopy I think it's um, maybe 12 foot I don't really remember the size but it's a great little canopy keeps you in the shade and we have bought um, extra shade that goes in the track on the front here so when we're down at the beach areas it'll block some of the Sun out for you it's got a nice design on top it's just a great little awning we love it helps keep you cool so moving around to the back our camper came with this Lippert on the go ladder um, I think it's an option now but we bought this at the Tampa RV show and it came standard with it it just telescopes in really nice it folds down to just about nothing but it, the camper comes with this Lippert on the go ladder receiver which is right there the little metal pieces lock in there so that you can climb the ladder and you don't have to worry about the ladder teetering or on you so it's it's a really stable ladder I think it's rated for 300 pounds so it's great for getting up on the roof right up here you see the rear Furion it's prepped for a rear camera we haven't 
seen the need to get a backup camera. The trailer so short, 22.6. I don't really feel the need for having a backup camera at this point. But up on the top, it's got these um, nice LED lights for the brakes and the turn signals. So that way, if there's a vehicle blocking the lower turn signals, the people that are two or three cars back can still see that you're braking and turning. So that's great. And these LED lights right here on the brake lights, the reverse lights are super bright. I mean, if you're backing into a campsite at nighttime, these things, it's unbelievable how bright they are. Your ember will come with a spare, a full size 225-75 R16 Wrangler workhorse. Goodyear tire. It's rated for like 85 miles per hour. It's filled with nitrogen. So it's a full size spare on their regular rim. It does not have a tire minder cap for the spare, but if you get a flat, you take your tire minder off and you'll have to repair, you'll have to relearn is what the app says, relearn your tires. So it's not a big deal. Back here, you've got a two inch receiver rated for 300 pounds. So a lot of people carry these electric bikes and what have you. We haven't delved into that stuff yet of toting anything back here. That's future for us, but it is there. Two inch receiver, 300 pound rating. It's got a nice little cargo door in the back, which one of their selling points is they tell you you can put a 12 foot kayak in here. I keep the kayaks in the back of my truck. I've got an eight foot bed. The kayaks are 10 foot long. It's just as easy. That way we can still access the bathroom and the refrigerator without having to. But if you didn't have a truck with an empty bed, I'm sure that's a great place to store stuff. You could probably put bicycles in here. Who knows what else? But it's a great little great little cargo door All right, moving on around so this side of course you've got your little your uh, hookup for your stinky slinky right here is where the stinky slinky is stored so it's pretty close easy to hook up we've added this gate valve Gina will put a link in the description having a little gate valve so you don't have any kind of mishaps when you go to hook up your your stinky slinky is a great addition because it's not fun getting covered with sewage. Of course, you got another parking brake on this side. This is your 30 amp hookup. Now, this is supposed to have a little blue light here, and it worked when we first got it, but sometime over the past few months, this blue light does not work anymore. I'm sure it's under warranty, but I really don't want to take it all the way to Gaines, Jacksonville. It's a two and a half hour trip just to get a little $20 part. So this is your bathroom here. It's got a nice high window. That window opens up. It has the same screen or sunshade inside. And it's got a nice fan inside. We'll take you inside in a minute. Right here, you've got your other Lippert on the go ladder receiver. So you can get up here and clean your slide before you put the slide in. You wanna make sure the slide is cleaned and I've heard a lot of videos, people talking about putting stuff on the seals. Lippert recommended to wash the seals with hot soapy water. Um, they didn't say anything about spraying anything on the seals, just to wash them with hot soapy water. So that's what we're opting for is just to wash the seals with hot soapy water. It's got a new slide system on here. It's got new tracks. I'm not sure if they replaced the motors or not, but it, they had to take this H column out and replace it. And they replaced the tracks. Like I said, I'm not sure about the motors, but nice little dinette slide. This window opens up as well. So when you're sitting there eating dinner, if you don't want the AC blowing on you, you can pop this window open. This one opens, um, I think this one has the clickers on it, so it'll open up so far and click and hold itself. Coming around to the other side of the slide. We've got our first sticker we put on there. We've seen some YouTubers that cover their slide with stickers, so we're gonna do the same thing. Collect some cool stickers. Another window right here next to your sofa. This one clicks out. 
gives you a nice breeze blowing through. And this is your exhaust for your Truma hot water and furnace. The Truma system really works great. Um, it works really good in the summertime, the hot water. We'll see, we're going up to the mountains in um, November. So we'll see how good the Truma system holds out in really cold weather. So that pretty much wraps it up. Here's the other side with your um, side marker camera. Furion side marker camera right here. So that's pretty much it on the outside, except for, okay, I've got a couple things here. These nice little stabilizer jacks, they work really good. Um, I put a little metal pad from work. It's a real thin piece of metal I put underneath the foot so that this doesn't dig into the ground. They work great. You've got your low point drains right here for your hot and cold water, you open those up. And back here is your fresh water drain. So if you wanted to empty your, um, your fresh water tank, you would pull that gate valve and all your fresh water would come out. And that, I think, is pretty much all the little systems that we've got. I do have another video on the um, equalizer hitch. My truck is a 2500 HD. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily need a weight distribution hitch, but this is sway control, which I like the sway control because idiots pull out in front of you. You hit the brakes, you go to swerve. You don't want everything fishtailing and going crazy. So it's just a backup safety factor for me. It's been a great little, it's easy to hook up. And that is the Ember 191 MDB six-month review.